Hello everyone. Welcome to the Kellogg Garden YouTube channel. I'm Bridget. Today I want to talk to you about planting raised beds and most specifically about mistakes to avoid when planting a raised bed. Uh, but first, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss any great content this season. And if you like this video, we'd appreciate it if you could tap that like button so other people find it. All right, let's jump in. So initially when you're planning out your raised beds you're going to you're going to look at the big three you're going to look at sun water and soil so soil you just want to make sure that the soil in your raised beds is proper for a raised bed uh, it needs to be well draining so you don't want to use the soil from the ground in a raised bed because this is an enclosed environment and we've done some videos on this so uh, we'll link them below but you also want to make sure that they have a comparable ph um, the ph needs so some plants like it a little bit more acidic, some like it a little more alkaline. So you want to make sure um, that they all benefit from the soil composition you have in your beds. Second, water. Now on the watering side, most veggies need one to two inches a week. Uh, but that does depend on temperature, uh, how, how much it heats up, and it also depends on the type of plant. Like this tomato here needs a lot more water, right? So our squashes, our tomatoes, plants like that are gonna require more water. So when I'm planting out my bed, I'm gonna make sure that plants that are near this tomato also benefit from having more water. So I don't wanna overwater one plant while trying to properly water another. So when I plant out my raised bed, I need to make sure that I'm thinking about the water needs of the plant. And then sun. Now sun exposure, of course I'm gonna pick plants in this area, this is a really sunny area. So full sun plants that need eight to 12 hours of sun is what I want in this location. Easy, right? Just plant them out here. But the next consideration is making sure that one plant doesn't block another. So I need to know the maturity height of each plant so I make sure that after I've strategically planted this bed, I don't mess up and one plant then blocks another plant and that plant doesn't produce, right? So in this bed, for instance, I have edamame here. This will get about three feet tall. I have this purple beauty bell pepper here and this can get three to five feet. And then I have this vining tomato here, green zebra, and it could get six to nine feet. I mean, it's a big vine. And then I have this red cabbage over here, some little onions right here, Swiss chard. I have um, some cucumbers, and then I've got some beans uh, over here. So if I planted a tomato right here, uh, especially a determinant for bushy tomato, it could have gotten tall and then blocked the rest of these plants. This is the east, this is where the sun's gonna rise. It's gonna come this way, you're gonna get more sun this way, and then it's gonna set over here in the west. So the good, really bright, um, vibrant sun is coming from this direction. By the time it gets over here, right, it's not that hot sun, it's that nice glow. So this cabbage here doesn't need as much sun, so it's in a perfect location. And now all of these will still get sun and they won't block each other. So that's really important. And when I first started planting my beds, I didn't think about that. Now, of course I can, this bed is on wheels, so I can move it around a little bit in case one plant gets out of control. Uh, or I plant something and I didn't realize it was gonna go gangbusters. But not all raised beds are movable, so definitely think about that. The other thing you wanna think about and plan for is the spread of a plant. So not only maturity height, but how, how far is it going to spread? So like this nasturtium here, it can go really wild through the bed. So I know that I'm gonna have to keep it pruned so it doesn't crowd out others. But right in this area, I've got these planted kind of close together. I've got my tomato, I've got my Swiss chard, and I've got this purple beauty here. And they're pretty close together. So this could be a problem. Now I'm gonna, trellis this so this is going to pull this out of the way um, so I'm really going to have to watch these two this is my biggest problem I like to really plant beds I really do and the problem with 
having them so close together is that you're not going to get enough airflow through there. And if you don't get enough airflow, then you're just inviting pests and disease. And it, it's harder to maintain. Also, I want to get the most production out of these plants as possible. And if another plant is crowding it up here, but also under the soil in the roots uh, area, then I might not, it might not flourish. So really be careful with that. The other thing to plan for is succession planning. So um, I want to know when these plants are going to reach their fullest. So when are they going to reach maturity? Is it going to be 60 days, 75 days, 90 days? So I can plan out my bed to make sure that I am getting crops throughout the season. The biggest mistake to make is to plant this whole bed and all of it produces at the same time. Then you are overloaded with fruits and vegetables that you have to figure out to how to preserve or give away. Um, so making sure that you are producing throughout the season is really important and it'll allow you to enjoy your harvest not to be overloaded at once. You still may be preserving, but it also will help you get the most out of the season. So I look at the maturity dates of all of these plants, but I'm also planning on when these plants are ready to be pulled, do I have other plants to put in their place? So getting the most out of my season, I absolutely want to do that. So that's succession planting. You might start seeds every two weeks, every four weeks, planning for all of these plants and and how to cycle them in and out like that cabbage is going to be spent um, pretty quickly so I've already got my eye on that space so that's something to consider the next thing to consider is a lot of times we're so focused on growing food that we don't think about growing flowers so Flowers are important because we need those pollinators, right? And I get it. Sometimes you just you just don't have a lot of space and you just don't want to give it up. You want to grow as much food as possible. But without pollinators, a lot of our food doesn't flourish. And we get questions a lot about why aren't my flowers turning into tomatoes? Or a lot of times with cucumbers and squash, we get that question too. Why do I have a big beautiful plant it's got flowers but I'm not I'm not getting any fruit and it can be water Sun nutrients but a lot of times it's lack of pollinators so then you have to hand pollinate so you want to plan for this this nasturtium here has two functions one pollinators love it hummingbirds love it bees love it it's it's a great plant I've also found some of my really good bugs in it uh, some of my lady beetles love it so this plant is going to help me attract some pollinators that will help pollinate some of my food. The other thing it does though is it's a trap plant. Uh, a lot of the pests like it. So those soft body little buggers like this as well. So they're attracted to it and that might keep them away from some of my other plants. I also have some other um, flowers intermixed in here. Now I am a gardener who <laughs> likes the look of things so I want it to look pretty and be functional so I definitely pull in my pansies and my marigolds but again two functions pollinators and pests are what I'm thinking about when I'm bringing it in so don't make that mistake of not bringing in enough flowers in your beds and you don't if you don't want to take up room in your bed I have some containers right here that also have flowers in them so you could do some containers next to your bed and then put flowers in that but just make sure that you're thinking of those pollinators when you're doing this um, and lastly I, I talked about the pests and companion planting for pests but companion planting definitely pay attention to what plants go together and what may not some plants attract pests and they may doubly attract pests some repel like onions I love having onions in the garden um, and then some just aren't good together like I have uh, this fennel right here 
and fennel doesn't grow well with anything <laughs> nothing so i have moved it off to its own little container and i guess there's some sort of hormone that it sends off uh, and can affect the root system of other plants i didn't believe it so i planted it near some celery i don't know if i didn't believe it or if i just was like yeah whatever it's not gonna be a big deal my celery did not produce at all so that's true uh, it's true so you don't have to test that out for yourself so planting things off um, and making sure that they are not in your beds right so this guy is going to be fine um, and something like this I have right here an artichoke I'm not sure if you can see it it's an emerald artichoke making sure that again you can move things off you can keep them close together but not everything has to be in your bed and my last tip, and I think the most important tip is the biggest mistake to avoid is not planting, right? So I always have a journal, I'm not great at always taking my notes and making sure I do this, but when I'm thinking about starting seeds or buying plants at a nursery, I write it all down and I wanna know what I'm growing and then I start to draw out my beds. What would work well with what? And, um, and then really kind of figuring out. I mean, I, I write maturity dates, I write um, all sorts of information about the plant, plant height, uh, sun needs, things like that. And that way I can plan these beds out a little bit better and I'm not at the last minute trying to figure it out. Now Kellogg has some planting charts, so we'll uh, put a link in the description below so you can actually you don't have to go research all the plants they have them all researched so you can see all the information about um, maturity height maturity date sun exposure spacing in the beds how far each plant needs to be spaced all of that information but planning planning is the biggest thing and it will save you a lot plus next season you can look back at your notes and really say, okay, that worked, that didn't work. I put all these plants together and some performed well and some didn't and kind of start strategizing your next season. So planning, big, big, big. All right, so those are just a few things, um, a few mistakes to avoid when planting your beds. There are all sorts of things with planting and maintaining your beds. So I'll see you guys again soon and we'll, we'll look at how well my beds are doing and if I planned them right. Uh, thank you again for joining me, and I will talk to you guys again real soon. All right, happy gardening.